thank you very much. Mange tak. I have never felt more encouraged than being around pastor. So uh, thank you so much. Jeg har blevet så opmuntret af pastor. Everyone's been tak. so nice. Alle har været så søde. Everyone's been so kind. Alle har været så flinke ved mig. And your pastor. Og din præst. Sorry, in America we call everybody pastor. Sorry, but uh, your pastor is such a blessing to me. Jeres præst er sådan en velsignelse til mig. My uh, my daughter is playing in the Dana Cup this week. Min datter, hun spiller fodboldturnering lige nu. So she's playing against 44 teams to win. She's from American team that came over to play. Det er et amerikansk hold, som kommer for at spille mod 44 andre hold. And so I'm just following her soccer matches. That's all I'm doing, you know, and... Uh, så jeg bare her for at følge hendes fodboldkampe. And so I was on the ferry coming over here. Så der på færgen på vej herover. And as I was over here, I, I text pastor. Og der på vej herover så SMS'er jeg præsten. Pastor Dan, I said I think I'm close. Jeg skrev til pastor Dan, jeg tror jeg er tæt på jeres kirke. And I told him where I was. Og hvor sælger jeg var? He said you're real close. Og han sagde du er rigtig tæt på. So suddenly I'm here by a total surprise. Og lige pludselig you know? er jeg her som en kæmpe overraskelse. But uh, what a great joy. Men sådan en glæde. You'll say why are you traveling? De spørger, de spørger, hvorfor rejser du? To watch your soccer, soccer, soccer matches. Bare for at se din datter spille fodbold. I don't know why, but it's awesome. Amen, you know. Jeg ved det ikke, men det er bare fedt. <laughs> and I've been with her this week and Jeg har med den her I uge. just been running errands. She I've been her personal assistant all week long. Jeg har bare været personlig assistent løb hendes She needs a pillow, I bring a pillow. Hun har brug for en pude, jeg kommer med en pude. She needs to get away from her teammates for a few hours. I'm there. Så Amen. Hun har fri rum, så er det mig der tager hende ud. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. Så det har været rigtig sjovt. It's good to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. Det er så godt at være her. Tak for det. Turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Gå til Ordsprogenes bog, kapitel 3, vers 5 og 6. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. If you don't have your Bible, I just assume you already know it, so that's good. Hvis du har en Bibel med, så tænker jeg, at det er fordi du kan den udenad. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Ordsprogenes 3. Trust in the Lord. Stol på Herren. With all your heart. Af hele dit hjerte. Lean not on your own understanding. Og støt dig ikke til din egen indsigt. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Have ham i tankerne på alle dine veje. And he shall direct thy path. Så vil han jævne dine stier. Let's pray. Lad os bede sammen. Father, I pray. Far, jeg beder. As I deliver this message. Som jeg kommer med det her budskab. That you would do something in the hearts of people. At du vil gøre noget i menneskers hjerte. That would change our lives. Som vil forandre vores liv. In Jesus' name. I Jesu navn. Amen. Amen. My father. Min far. Pastor Tommy Barnett. Præst Tommy Barnett. Pastor a church of 10,000 members. Har en kirke med 10.000 medlemmer. Back when a day when that was impossible. Der var et tidspunkt hvor det var helt umuligt. And so I was raised. Og så blev jeg opdraget. In the in the home. I et hjem. Of a pastor. En præst. Of the largest church in the country. I den største kirke i USA. And so as a young kid. Som et lille barn. I don't have the testimony. Så har jeg ikke noget vidnesbyrd. Of being raised up in a small church somewhere. At blive opdraget i en lille kirke eller et sted. I was raised in the shadows. Jeg blev opdraget i skyggen of a mega ministry. Af en kæmpe kirke. And so when I started, og så var jeg begyndte. People would come up to me. Så kom mennesker hen til mig. And they would say things like this. Og de ville sige ting som det her. If you could just be half of what your father is. Hvis du kunne bare være halvdelen af det din far er. The Lord would really use you in a powerful way. Så vil Herren virkelig bruge dig på en mægtig måde. And I had a, I was 20. Og jeg var 20. When I started pastoring my church. Da jeg begyndte at lede den her kirke. But I was 16. Jeg var 16. When I had the call of God on my life. Da jeg fik Guds kald på mit liv. But there is a problem. Men der var et problem. I committed to preach the gospel. Jeg gav mig selv til at prædike evangeliet. But I had a stuttering problem. I could barely communicate. Men jeg havde et problem. Jeg kunne knap nok kommunikere med mennesker. So when I announced that I was going to preach. Så da jeg sagde at jeg ville prædike Everybody was laughing. Så grinede alle af mig. As if that was impossible. Fordi de tænkte det var umuligt. For me to do such a thing. For mig at gøre sådan noget. But I just kept trying. Jeg blev ved med at prøve. And when I was 16. Og da jeg var 16. I stayed with my grandma. Så boede jeg med min mormor. Who lived in a, in in in, a, in the state of Kansas in America. Som boede i staten Kansas. And she said, I'm going to book you in all the churches. Og hun sagde, jeg vil booke dig ind i alle kirkerne. As a 16 year old preacher. Som en 16 årig gammel prædikant. To preach all over the city. Til at prædike overalt. And I said, Dad, I, I, I said to her, how could you do this? Og jeg spurgte hende, hvordan kunne du gøre det? How could you get me to preach to all these churches? Hvordan kunne du få mig ind der? I mean, my dad couldn't even get me in any churches. Min far kunne ikke få mig ind i en eneste kirke. Uh, Grandma, how are you doing this? Mormor, hvordan kunne du gøre det her? She said, well, I'm the number one counselor. Men jeg er nummer et. Of all the pastors. Jeg er rådgiver for alle præsterne. <laughs> in the whole state. I hele staten. She said, I know all their secrets. Jeg Amen. kender alle you know, deres uhyggelige hemmeligheder. <laughs> And so suddenly there was an open door everywhere to preach. Lige pludselig var der åbent over det hele. And my first sermon. 
Og min første prædiken. I was 20 years of age. Så var jeg 20 år gammel. I was so excited. Jeg var så spændt. I had a 45 minute sermon plan. Jeg havde en 3 kvarters prædikenplan. I, I was so nervous. Jeg var så nervøs. I preached it all in 5 minutes. Jeg prædikede det hele på 5 minutter. And when I was done, og da jeg var færdig, I was so discouraged. Så <laughs> så mismodig. I put my hands over my head. Jeg tog mine hænder til hovedet. And one of the ushers walked down. Så kom der en og kiggede til hende. He was the older gentleman. Han var en ældre herre. He put his hand on my shoulder. Han puttede sin hånd på min skulder. And he said, young man. Unge mand. I'm going to give you the best advice. Jeg giver dig det bedste råd. Any young man can receive in the ministry. Nogen som helst unge mand har brug for det. I said, what's that, sir? Så spurgte jeg, hvad er det her? He said, don't do it. Han sagde, lad være med at gøre det. Don't preach the gospel. Lad være med at prædike evangeliet. Some people have it. Nogle mennesker har det. And some people don't. Og så er der bare nogen, der ikke har det. So my message this morning. Så mit budskab den her morgen. Is about protecting. Er med at beskytte. The call of God upon your life. Guds kald på dit liv. The moment you surrender, det øjeblik du overgiver dig. To do anything for God. Så gør noget som helst for Gud. In business. I forretning. To glorify God in any way. I at herliggøre Gud på hvilken som helst måde. When you feel called to do something. Og du føler dig kaldet til at gøre noget. From the moment you respond to the call. Lige for det øjeblik du responderer på hans kald. There will be an attack on that call for the rest of your life. Så vil der et angreb på det kald resten af dit liv. There will be people telling you the vision is too big. Der er mennesker som fortæller dig at din vision er alt for stor urealistisk. The, the opportunities are too big. Mulighederne er alt for store. But you got to fight. Men du bliver nødt til at to protect the call of God. Du bliver nødt til at beskytte Guds kald. And remember what the Lord spoke to you. Og husk hvad Gud sagde til dig. In those days of inspiration. I de dage hvor du blev inspireret. And realize that those weren't feelings. Og realisere at det var ikke bare følelser. Those were things that God wanted to do. Det var ting som Gud virkelig ville gøre. And I failed every sermon. Og jeg fejlede i alle prædikener. So one day. Så en dag. I said God, I'm going to get healed of this stuttering problem. Jeg sagde Gud, jeg vil blive helbredt for det her problem. So when I went outside. Så jeg gik udenfor. And I started preaching to the trees. Jeg begyndte at prædike til træerne. Practicing to the trees. Jeg øvede mig foran træerne. And I would stand outside. Og jeg ville stå udenfor. As, as a 16-year-old kid. Som en 16-årig gammel mand. And I said, those trees out there. De træer the, derude. You trees out there need to get saved. De træer, jeg bruger for at blive frelst. You trees need to give your life right with God. Amen. And I would receive offerings. <laughs> and, then a, and then a little a little thing would drop from the from the trees. So the And I would say thank you for that offering. I received that in faith. And, and some of the limbs would get intertwined. Og nogle af grene vil gå indad. And I would say you need to wait before you get married before you do that, you know. And uh, say you should be gift for you got it there. And I'm just preaching to the trees, you know. Og jeg prædiker bare til træerne. And one day, I, I, every day, as I was preaching to the trees. Og en dag ville jeg tale til træerne. A, a man who worked at the little church next door. Så stod der en mand som arbejdede ved den lille kirke ved siden af. He was the janitor. He was the custodian or the janitor of the church. Oh yeah, yeah. Vise verden. He said about the yeah. and uh, <laughs> and he would go outside. Han ville gå udenfor. And he would deliver the trash. Han ville komme med affaldet. And he would hear me preach. Så han hører mig prædike. And he would say, "Good job." Så han siger, "Godt arbejde." Keep going. Bliv ved med at gøre det. And one day when I preached to the trees. Og en dag da jeg prædikede til træerne. He came down to the front. Så kom han ned foran. After hearing my sermon to the trees. Efter at høre min prædiken til træerne. And he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Og han gav sit liv til Jesus. And that was the day. Og det var den dag. And I decided from that day on. Og lige for den dag har jeg besluttet mig. No matter what happened, at det må være, hvad der sker. God gave me a call, så har Gud givet mig et kald. And the, and the, and from hell would ever try to stop me. Og intet fra helvede skal nogensinde kunne stoppe and mig. People would say things, mennesker ville sige noget. And that's okay. Og det er okay. I, you don't fight people, du kæmper ikke mod mennesker. To prove to anything, du skal ikke bevise noget som helst. Because people don't know what's in your heart. Fordi mennesker ved ikke, hvad der er i dit hjerte. It's not their fault that they doubt you. Det er ikke deres skyld, at de tvivler på dig. Because they don't know the fire that's in your spirit. Fordi aner ikke, hvad for en ild, der er i dig. They don't know what's in your heart. De ved ikke, hvad der er i dit hjerte. So I decided not to get mad at people. Så jeg besluttede mig for ikke at blive sur på mennesker. Who didn't believe in my dream. Som ikke troede på min drøm. But just to trust that what God told me he was going to do. Men jeg stod på, at Gud ville gøre det, han fortalte mig, han ville gøre. That he was going to do it. And then when I was 20, one day I was driving around. My, my dad received a building in downtown LA. In the, in the 1990s, when gangs were out of control in Los Angeles, the church was in the middle of a gang warfare. Lige præcis i en bandekrig. Right there in the 90s. Lige der i 90'erne. And so my dad received the building. Og så fik min far den her bygning. From the assemblies of God. From the assemblies of God. Who gave him a building right in the middle of all the violence. Som gav ham en bygning lige midten af al volden. And so my dad said, we're going to plant a church. Og så sagde min far, yes, lad os prædike en kirke. And he invited all these pastors. Og han inviterede alle de her præster. And he said, I'm going to show you the building. Og han sagde, nu skal jeg vise jer bygningen. And will you take the church? Og vil I tage den her kirke? And they were so excited. Og vi var så spændte. A church in Los Angeles. En kirke i Los Angeles. 
Angeles. Right next to Hollywood. Lige ved siden af Hollywood. It's a wonderful opportunity. En fantastisk mulighed. Until they drove around the streets. Så kører vi rundt igennem gaderne. And saw gang members on the front porch of the building. Og vi så bandemedlemmer lige foran bygningen. And every single one of them said. Og hver eneste af dem sagde. I don't feel led of the Holy Spirit to come and pastor this church. You know. Jeg føler ikke ledt af Helligånden til at lede den her kirke. And so everyone turned it down. Så alle de afviste. And so I was 20. Så jeg var 20. And I said, Dad. Far. Um, I, I, may, I can help you for a couple weeks. Jeg kan hjælpe dig et par uger. And he said, okay, will you help me pastor for three months? Så sagde han, okay, vil du hjælpe mig med at lede den her kirke i tre måneder? Until we find a real pastor. Indtil vi finder en rigtig præst. I've been in the city of L.A. for 23 years. Nu har jeg været i L.A. i 23 år. And we're still looking for the real pastor. Og vi leder stadig efter en rigtig præst. Still haven't found him yet. We're still looking, but... But I was 20. Men jeg var 20. And we started with 18 people. Og vi startede med 18 mennesker. And the church didn't want a 20 year old pastor. Og den blev ledt af en 20 år ung præst. So we had two people left. Så vi havde to mennesker tilbage. And I, I that's it. Two people for several months. Two mennesker for flere måneder. And I managed to reduce the church like 900% or something like that, you know. Jeg lykkedes med at reducere kirkens medlemstal med 900%. And I was so discouraged. Jeg var så mismodig. And I went to my apartment one night. Og jeg gik hjem til min lejlighed. When nobody showed up in the service. Og der var ingen der kom til gudstjenesten. And I cried. Og jeg græd. I said God I'm the biggest failure. Gud, jeg er den største fejltagelse. What is wrong with me? Hvad der galt med mig? And I just wept for about four hours. Og jeg græd i cirka fire timer. And God spoke to me. Og så talte Gud til mig. He said, "Stop your crying." Så stop med at græde. I want you to do a prayer walk. Jeg ønsker at du skal gå igennem byen. In the middle of a, a park down the street. I en park hernede. And this park. Og den her park. Was where all the gangs were at. Var lige der hvor alle bander var. I thought God var. was mad at me. Jeg troede Gud var sur på mig. For being a big old complainer. Fordi jeg bare kom, beklagede mig. And maybe he was just going to finish me off in a drive-by shooting or something like that, you know. And, uh, and that night I walked around the park. Og den nat, der gik jeg gennem parken. I saw young boys with no fathers up against police cars being arrested. Så så en masse unge mænd uden fædre, som blev arresteret. I saw helicopters that were looking for criminals in the park. Jeg så helikopter, der ledte efter kriminelle nede i parken. I saw homeless teenagers everywhere. Jeg så hjemløse teenager overalt. And that night when I looked around that park, den nat, der jeg rundt den her park, God changed my life. Forandrede Gud mit liv. He said, "Remember the call of God." Han sagde, "Husk Guds kald." When I called you, da jeg kaldte dig, when you were 16 years of age, da du var 16 år gammel, hold on to that dream. Hold fast i den drøm. Protect that dream. Beskyt den drøm. Because I'm about to do something incredible. Fordi jeg skal til at gøre noget helt fantastisk. I said, "What do I do, God?" Så sagde jeg, "Hvad skal jeg gøre, Gud?" He said, "You just keep standing." Du skal bare blive ved med at stå. Every day, hver dag. You just keep standing. Bare blive ved med at stå. You don't have to have it figured out. Du behøver ikke at have det hele regnet ud. Just keep standing. Bare blive ved med at stå. And the miracle started happening. Og så begyndte det mirakel at ske. And the Lord spoke to me that night in the park. Og Gud talte til mig den her He dag. He said, "I want you to die to your dream of being a success." Han sagde, "Dø til din drøm om at være en, din egen succes." I don't want you to think about success. Lad mig tænke på succes. I want you to go home. Gå hjem. I want you to tear up your five-year plans. Så skal du rive din fem, femårsplan i stykker. And I don't want you to have any more plans. Og ikke flere planer. I just want you to spend your life nu bare brug for, at du din liv, walking through the streets of the city for at gå igennem byens gader, looking for needs that need to be met efter behov, der skal mødes, and responding to anything that was in your city that needed help. Og respondere på alt i din by, som har brug for He said, die to the dream of being a success til drøm om at være en succes, and live to the dream og live hen mod drøm. of being a blessing. At være en velsignelse for andre. And that night God changed my life. Og den nat så ændrede Gud mit liv. God, I could do that. Så sagde Gud, det kan jeg gøre. Whatever you put in my hand. Lige meget hvad du putter i mine hænder. I'm going to use it for your glory. Så vil jeg bruge det til at herliggøre dig. But I had dig. nothing. Men jeg havde ingenting. All I had in my hand. Alt jeg havde i min hånd. Was a desk inside my building. Var et uh, skrivebord inde i min bygning. And I had no staff. Og jeg havde intet staff. And I was a secretary. Og jeg var en sekretær. And so people would call my church. Så p- folk ville ringe til kirken. And I would answer the phone. Og det var mig der svarede til telefonen. And I said, okay, God, the church starts. Og jeg sagde, okay, Gud, kirken starter. With a desk on the sidewalk. Med et skrivebord på uh, fortovet. So I moved my office on the sidewalk. Så jeg flyttede mit kontor ud på fortovet. And every day. Og hver dag. All the mamas would walk their kids to school. Så ville alle møderne komme gående forbi med deres børn. And I bought it, I had enough money to buy a jar of candy. Og jeg havde købt en masse slik. I put it on the desk. Så jeg puttede på skrivebordet. And I bought three bags of food. Og tre poser mad. And I prayed. Og jeg bad. About who to give it to. Og hvem jeg skulle give det til. That's how it started. Og det var sådan det startede. And they would walk by in the neighborhood. Og så ville de bare gå igennem. And I would just give away food. Og jeg ville gå og give mad til mennesker. And that's where the church started. Det var sådan kirken begyndte. Then people would call me. Så so mennesker begyndte at ringe mig. And they would say hello. They would say hi. Does your church have a women's women's ministry? Har din kirke et kvinde, hvad hedder det, afdeling? And I said, hold on a second. Så sagde jeg, vent lige et øjeblik. And then I changed my voice. Så ændrede min stemme. It made it sound like I was a woman. Amen. Det lyder som om jeg var en kvinde. 
<laughs> How many know when God gives you a dream? Hvor mange ved når Gud giver en drøm? You've got to act like you're there even though you're not there yet, you know, and uh you have to act like you're there even though you're not there yet. Never yeah. mind, we're moving on. Anyways, but uh But that but that's where we started. Det var sådan det begyndte. Just giving away whatever we had. Bare give væk lige meget hvad du har. Answering a phone on the desk. Tag en telefon. And then a lady came by and she said, "Pastor." Så kom der en kvinde og sagde, "Præst." I want to give you an apartment. Jeg vil give dig en lejlighed. Then God spoke to me. Gud talte til mig. He said, "I want you to open up a home." Han sagde, "Åbn dit hjem." This apartment. Den her lejlighed. For people that have drug and alcohol problems. For mennesker som har stofproblemer, stofmisbrug og alkoholer. Det er Gud. Han sagde, Gud. I don't know how to do this. Jeg ved ikke hvordan det. I don't know how to start a rehab program. Jeg ved ikke hvordan starte sådan en rehabiliteringsprogram. I've never used drugs in my life. Jeg har aldrig taget stoffer i mit liv. I can't relate to this God. Jeg kan ikke relatere til sådan nogle mennesker. And God said it's not about relating to the problem. Og Gud sagde det har ikke noget at gøre med at relatere til et bestemt problem. It's about just being there for people. Det handler om bare at være der for mennesker. And so I took in four guys. Så jeg tog fire drenge. And I lived with these guys. Og jeg levede med de her mænd. And uh, they were living in our in our recovery home in the house. Og de levede i And so the first day, so the first day, they came into the apartment. Så kom de ind i lejligheden. And they said, Pastor. De sagde, Præst. What is the recovery program? Hvad handler det her rehabiliteringsprogram om? I said, I don't know. Så sagde jeg, aner det ikke. Just, just read the Bible and come to church with me. Bare læs i Bibelen og kom i kirke sammen med mig. Sometimes in the church, sometimes in the church. Nogle gange i kirken. We feel like we have to have the perfect plan in the church. Så føler vi at vi har brug for den helt perfekte plan. In order to help people. For vi kan hjælpe mennesker. But the problem is this. Men problemet er det her. People are people. Amen. Mennesker er mennesker. You can't control everything. Du kan kontrollere alt. Sometimes you just got to take a step of faith. Nogle gange skal du bare tage et skridt i tro. And do something that doesn't make sense. Og gøre noget som overhovedet ikke giver mening. In order to find out if there's a god or not. Så du kan finde ud af om der er en gud eller ej. That will carry you through. Og Gud vil bære dig igennem det. Whatever you need to know. Lige meget hvad du har brug for. And so we took in these four guys. Så vi tog de her fire mænd ind. Help them get their lives together. Vi hjælper deres liv. And then we got two homes. Så fik vi to hjem. Three homes. Tre hjem. 14 homes in the neighborhood. 14 hjem i det her neighborhood. That were filled with people whose lives were being changed. Som var fyldt med mennesker, hvis liv blev forandret. And we outgrew that neighborhood. Og så blev vi for store til det sted. It's funny, you can think about being a success. Du kan tænke over, at du vil være en succes. And never find it. Og så vil du aldrig finde det. But you can lose yourself. Men du kan miste dig selv. In helping other people. I bare at hjælpe andre mennesker. And one day wake up and realize. Lige pludselig en dag så vågner du op og op der. That by losing yourself in God's heart. Er det ved at glemme dig selv og bare være fokuseret på Guds hjerte. You accomplish more than anything you can think or imagine. Så har du opnået meget mere end du havde troet at du kunne. And one day I'm driving down the freeway, down the hot, down the freeway in Los Angeles. Så kører vi ned mod Los Angeles motorvejen. And I'm driving down the road. Og jeg kører ned ad vejen. And I look to my right. Så kigger til højre. And I see the biggest hospital. Og jeg ser det største hospital. In the West Coast. På hele vestkysten. Right on the freeway. Lige der ved motorvejen. And the building said for sale. Og bygningen der stod der til salg. And so I'm 23 years old. Jeg er 23 år gammel. I'm praying. Jeg beder. For a new building. For en ny bygning. I see it on the road. Og jeg ser den her bygning. So I say, well, maybe I should just drive over and see. Så jeg måske skal bare køre og kigge. So I pulled up into the hospital. Så jeg kørte op ved siden af hospitalet. And the Paramount Movie Studios. Det her store filmselskab. I was going to buy it. Vil købe det. They were going to turn into a movie set. You built it up to a place where you could watch a film. And so I walked on that campus. And so I got in. And Brad Pitt. Oh, Brad Pitt. The actor, Brad Pitt. Schoolspeller Brad Pitt. And George Clooney. Or George Clooney. Were a film in a movie there, right on the hospital. Were we up to a film there, live in the hospital? So I walked right up to Brad Pitt. So I walked right up to him. Because I'm not intimidated by actors. So I, I'm not intimidated by them. I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated by your pastors. Jeg er bange for jeres præster. But I'm not intimidated by actors. Men jeg er ikke bange for at være skuespiller. And I walked right up to Brad Pitt. Så gik jeg lige hen til Brad Pitt. And I said, Brad Pitt, it's good to see you. Så Brad Pitt, godt at se dig. And he looked at me. Og han kiggede på mig. Like who's this guy? Hvem er det her? Boldly talking to the great Brad Pitt, you know. Åh, hvor her taler så meget. Hvem tror han er? And then, but, but back then we were on Christian television. Men tilbage i den tid der var vi på Christian TV. TBN gave us free air. The Christian television gave us free air time for 10 years. Vi fik gratis TV tid i 10 år. Free. Gratis. For 10 years. 10 år. And so Brad Pitt stopped. Og så stoppede Brad Pitt. And he looked at me. Og han kiggede på mig. And he said, I think I know who you are. Og han sagde, jeg tror, hvem du er. He said, I watch you every Friday night on Christian television. Han sagde, jeg ser dig hver aften, hver fredag aften på Christian TV. No, he didn't say that. I'm just joking. Nej, det sagde han ikke. Det var bare sjov. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the evangelist side of me speaking. Amen. Det er evangelist, når mig der taler nu. 
And so that so I walked in there and the uh, Catholic church owned the building. Så gick där en katolsk kyrka som hade det. They were going to sell it. De ville sälja den. To the movie studios. Till det här filmstudio. For 16 million dollars. For 16 million dollars. In 1990s. I 90s. 16 million dollars. 16. How much is that like 155 billion francs? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But uh it's a lot. Amen. <laughs> and so uh, we we pulled in. Så vi kört in. And, uh, and, and and I walked in the middle and I entered the Catholic sisters who owned the building. And I said, we don't have 16 million dollars. But we have a dream. Men vi har en drøm. And we told them the dream. Og vi fortalte dem om drømmen. And they were so touched. Og de blev så berørt af And they said, well, go by the building someday. Så de, byg, køb bygningen en dag. And go, and go see the building. Og gå og se den. And so I walked to the building. Så gik jeg hen til bygningen. And I said, I want to see this building. Så jeg vil se den her bygning. And they said, do you have 16 million dollars? Og de spurgte, har du 16 millioner dollars? And I said, no. Nej. But I have a dream. Men jeg har en drøm. They weren't impressed. Men det imponerede dem ikke. They kicked me out of the building. De sparkede mig ud af bygningen. And wouldn't even allow me to get a tour of the building. De ville ikke engang tillade mig at se bygningen. But you know what I did? Men ved du hvad jeg gjorde? I looked around. Jeg kiggede rundt. And I saw a security guard that wasn't paying attention. And there was a back door that was open. And I snuck in the building and gave myself a tour of the building anyway. Sometimes you got to go gangster for Jesus. Amen. It's just, it's just, that's a tough one to translate. But uh, anyways, uh, but I walked in that building illegally <laughs> with one eye on Jesus. <laughs> and one eye, I was looking at Jesus, and I was looking for the security guard. Yeah, for Jesus, or an for and I walked to that building. I went to the top of the roof. And I looked at the Hollywood sign. And I said, God. I said, God. The, the, the young people, the, the, the pimps in our city, and the drug pushers. Alle de her der sælger stoffer i den her by. 24 hours a day. 24 timer i døgnet. Are looking for young kids. De leder efter unge mennesker. They're looking to make young kids into prostitutes. De leder efter unge mennesker, som de kan få ind i prostitution. 24 hours a day. 24 timer i døgnet. The store, the, the, the liquor stores are open. Så er alkoholbutikkerne åben. Selling to the people in the community. Sælger alkohol til mennesker. 24 hours. 24 timer. The gang members. Så har bandemedlemmerne. Are recruiting kids in our community. Rekrutterer de unge børn i the, det her samfund. If they can work 24 hours a day. Hvis de kan arbejde 24 timer i døgnet. I believe you can open up a church that will be open 24 hours, 7 days a week. Så tror jeg, for du også kan åbne en kirke, som hele tiden har åbent i døgndrift. And I saw that hospital. Og så så jeg det hospital. As I looked over that campus. Så kiggede jeg ud over campus. God spoke to me. Så talte Gud til mig. He said one day. Så sagde han en dag. There's going to be a thousand people. Så vil der være tusind mennesker. Living in this building. Som bor i den her bygning. Any homeless family. In hver hjemløs We have a place to live. Every drug addict could live on this hospital floor. Every human trafficking victim. Every girl sold into slavery could live on this floor. God spoke to me. He said, I'm going to give you a church that will be open 24 hours, seven days a week, and through a series of miracles, the Catholic Church turned down the film studio's offer of 16 million dollars, and they sold it to us for four million dollars. For four million dollars. And now today, if you want to show it, do you have the video? And now today, we have a hospital right here. Right there, we have a hospital right here. That's open 24 hours a day. So we're open 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Right below the Hollywood sign. Right below the Hollywood sign. That's always open. It's always open. Where anybody who has any need in the city. You know, them that have behold in the city. From homelessness to addiction. From homelessness to addiction can come and have their life transformed for the glory of God. Kan komme og få deres liv forvandlet. In the most visible building in all of Los Angeles. I mest tydelige bygning i hele Los Angeles. That was in my five year plan. Det var ikke i min fem års plan. That was not on the goal sheet on my walls. Det var på min væg i historiebøgerne. But the Bible says in all thy ways acknowledge him. Han sagde nej i alle dine veje anerkend ham. And he shall direct thy path. Og så skal han lede din vej. In all thy ways acknowledge him. I alle dine veje erkend ham. He will direct thy path. Så vil han jævne din stige. I realize it's not my job. Så opdager jeg det ikke mit job. To direct my path. At jævne min vej. But just to acknowledge him. Men bare til at have ham i tankerne. By using whatever he puts in my hand. Ved bare at bruge lige meget hvad han giver mig i hænderne. To serve him. Til at tjene ham. I used to get stressed out. 
normalt så bliver jeg meget stresset. I used to preach with a stom- with stomach pains. Jeg ville få helt ondt i maven når jeg skulle prædike. Because I was wondering who would show up at church. Jeg tænkte, hvem må dukke op i dag? But God said I want I don't want you to live under that pressure anymore. Men Gud sagde, du skal ikke leve under det pres længere. All you can do. Det eneste du kan gøre is be a blessing. Er en velsignelse. With what I have given you. Med lige meget hvad jeg har givet dig. Don't live under any more stress. Du skal ikke leve under stress. Just give away everything I put in your hand. Bare giv alt det væk som jeg putter i din hånd. Do it with a good attitude. Og gør det med en god attitude. And do it the good spirit. Og gør det i en god ånd. I didn't know God had that. Jeg vidste ikke Gud havde det der. But there's some things that happen. Der er nogle ting der sker. Through serving. Når man tjener. That, that 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 gets revealed as you begin to serve. Som bliver åbenbart i takt med at du tjener. And God begin to do miracles. Og Gud begynder at gøre miracler. And now today. Og i dag. We have about a thousand people actually now. Så har vi tusind mennesker nu. Who live in the building. Som bor i bygningen. Who are being transformed by the glory of God. Som bliver forvandlet til Guds herlighed. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. I alle dine veje erkend ham. And He shall direct thy path. Og så vil han jævne dine stier. And I don't live under the the stress anymore. Jeg lever ikke under stress længere. I mean, yeah, it costs uh, millions of dollars to keep that place going. Ja, det koster mange millioner dollars at holde det kørende. But I realize. Men jeg har opdaget. That it's not my burden. At det er ikke min byrde. It's his burden. Det er Guds byrde. That he has to carry. At det er ham som bærer den. As long as we stay faithful. Lige så længe vi bliver ved med at være trofaste. He will direct thy path. Så vil han jævne vores stier. Miracles happen. Mirakler sker. When we step out of our comfort zone. Når vi træder ud af vores komfortzone. Every day I would drive down the freeway. Hver dag kører jeg ned ad motorvejen. I would get off the exit. Og så vil jeg komme ud af drejvejen. And there was a man. Så der en mand. For 17 years, i 17 år, who lived under the bridge of LA, som boede under den her bro i LA, the same bridge, den samme bro, homeless, hjemløs, 17 years, i 17 år, he was like the the man by the pool of Bethesda in the Bible, han var ligesom den mand ved søen i Bethesda i Bibelen, who for 38 years would not leave his spot, som i 38 år ikke kunne bevæge sig. This was this man. Det var den her mand. And I would come down and I would I would talk to him. Og så ville jeg komme ned og tale med ham. I would say you need some money. Så jeg spurgte, har du brug for nogle penge? I would try anything to start a conversation. Jeg ville gøre hvad som helst for at starte en samtale. Even if it meant giving him money. Selv bare give pengene. I would try. Jeg ville prøve. Some days I would say, do you want food? Vil du have mad? You know, he didn't want anything. Nej, det ville han heller ikke have. I, for 17 years I couldn't reach him. I 17 år så kunne jeg bare ikke nå ham. But one day. Men en dag. We had a youth group that was doing um, uh, volunteer work at our building. Så havde vi en ungdomsgruppe som lavede sådan noget frivilligt arbejde i vores bygning. And an 18 year old girl. Og en 18 årig pige. She said, Pastor. Hun sagde, Præst. I'm going to go visit that man under that bridge. Jeg går og besøger den mand under broen. And I'm going to bring him to the dream center. Og jeg vil tage ham med herhen til det dream center. Where he can get a meal. Hvor han kan få et måltid mad. And I looked at him. Og så kiggede jeg. And I said, well, good luck. Og så sagde jeg, held og lykke med det. I said this in my spirit, but I didn't say this outward. Jeg sagde det indeni, men jeg sagde det ikke ud. Outward, I'm like, praise God. Og så sagde jeg, wow, pris Gud for det. But inward, I'm like, good luck. Men you indeni, know? hvor jeg, ja, ja, I've been trying for 17 years. Jeg har prøvet i 17 år. What makes you think you can do this, you know? Du, hvorfor tror du, du kan gøre det? But she said, I'm going to go get him. Så sagde hun, jeg vil prøve at under the bridge. Så gik hun under broen. Grab this man by the hand. Så tog hun fat i hånden. And said, sir. Så sagde hun, herre. You are coming to the dream center. Du skal med mig hen til dream center. He said, no, I'm not. Så sagde han, nej, jeg skal ej. She said, yes, you are. Så sagde hun, jo, du skal. He said, no, I'm not. Så sagde han, nej, jeg skal ej. And she, and she grabbed him by the hand. Så tog hun i hånden. And pulled him up to the up the top of the hill to the dream center. Og trak ham op ad toppen af bakken til the dream center. And I looked at her. Og så kiggede jeg på hende. I said, "How did you do this?" Og spurgte, hvordan gjorde du det? How did you get this man here? Hvordan fik du den her mand her hen? I've been trying for 17 years. Jeg har prøvet 17 år. She said, "Pastor." Hun sagde, "Præst." The Bible says. Bibelen siger. That we ought to compel people to come into the house of the Lord. At vi skal tilskynde folk til at komme til Guds hus. And that word compel. Og det ord tilskynde. In the Greek. På græsk. Means to physically force them. Betyder fysisk at presse nogen. Into the house of the Lord. Ind i Guds hus. I don't know if her doctrine was perfect. Jeg ved ikke om det var perfekt doktrin. But it worked. Men det fungerede. So praise the Lord. Så so pris Herren. And this guy every day. Og den her fyr hver dag. This man took his food. Den her mand tog sit mad. He didn't sit in the cafeteria. Han sad i cafeteriet. We serve 3000 meals every day. Vi serverer 3000 måltider every hver dag. Every day 3000. 3000. And he would take his meal. Og han ville tage sit måltid. And he would go back under the bridge. Og så ville han gå tilbage under broen. And, and I was getting mad. Jeg var ved at blive sur. And I started saying foolish things. Og begyndte at sige dumme ting. Like oh Lord. 
Oh herre. We're not being a good steward of your resources. Vi forvalter ikke dine ressourcer særlig godt. This man is using us. Og den her mand bare misbruger os. Just to get free food. Bare for at få gratis mad. And then the Lord spoke to me. Og så talte han til mig. And he said, let him use you. Så sagde han, lad ham misbruge jer. Let him get all the free stuff he wants. Giv ham alt det gratis han vil have. Even if he never comes to a Bible study. Selv hvis han aldrig nogensinde kommer til et bibelstudie. Let him use you. Lad ham misbruge jer. And God spoke to me this word. Og så sagde Gud det her til mig. He said, if you want to be a bridge of hope. Så sagde han, hvis du vil være en bro af håb. People walk on bridges. Mennesker, de går på broer. You got to be walked on if you want to be a bridge of hope. Du skal være villig til at blive trådt på, hvis du vil være en bro af håb. Let him use you. Lad ham bruge dig. And every day. Og hver dag. He got free food. Så kan han gratis mad. But one day. Men en dag. But eBay, one day. Men en dag. One day. En dag. eBay. You say eBay? <laughs> oh, it's a shopping. It's like you said eBay. I'm like, is he going en shopping while I'm preaching? Day. You know, and uh. <laughs> but one day. eBay. eBay. But one day, Men en dag, he said, så sagde han, I want, I, I want to go into your rehab program. Jeg vil ind i jeres rehabiliteringsprogram. I'm like, our rehab program? Så sagde han, vores rehabiliteringsprogram. I mean, our rehab program is not like the ones in Hollywood. Så sagde han, vores rehabiliteringsprogram er ikke samme som i Hollywood. And the Hollywood rehab programs? I Hollywood. They have massages. Så kan man få massage. I mean, super fancy, you know. Det er meget, meget fint. That's not our rehab program. Det er ikke sådan, vi gør det her. Our rehab program, vores rehabiliteringsprogram, is beans and rice and Jesus Christ. Amen. Er bønder, you know, ris og Jesus Kristus. And uh, so he said, I want to come into your program. Så jeg vil med i det her program. For one year, i et år, he came into the program. Så kom han med i det program. As an older man, som en ældre mand, he graduated the program. Og han graduerede fra det program. Went to Bible school. Så gik han på bibelskolen. Graduated Bible school. Graduerede derfra. And now homeless Barry, right here. Og den her hjemløse mand. He's passed. Barry. He's one of my pastors on staff. Han er en præst og han er ansat i kirken i dag. He preaches 15 times a week. Han prædiker 15 gange om ugen. And he was living under the bridge. Og han bygger en bro. And people in LA. Og folk i LA. And governments. Og offentlige instanser. They say people can't change. De siger at mennesker kan ikke forandre sig. And they they write people off all the time. Og de afviser og trykker på folk. And so they throw money at a problem. Og så kaster de bare penge efter et problem. It's never been about governments and money solving problems. Det har aldrig handlet om penge og politik. It's a spiritual condition. Det er en åndelig tilstand. That only God's people can reach. Som kun Guds mennesker kan nå. We have the answer. Vi har svaret. We have the spiritual solution. Vi er den åndelige løsning. And our and our crime in our neighborhood. Og al kriminaliteten i vores nabolag. Up 73 percent. And the whole city of LA, hele byen, LA is trying to study why crime has dropped. Hvorfor at kriminalitetsretten They put billions of dollars into dollars i social issues ind i sociale programmer. and they have not solved it. Og de har så ikke løst problemet. But how is the people of Christ doing it? Men hvordan kan det være at Christi folk kan finde ud af det. Because it's a change of people's hearts. Fordi det handler om hjerteforandring. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Det er evangeliet om Jesus. 70% of my staff. 70% af mine ansatte. Are graduates of our drug and alcohol rehab program. Og graduerede for vores rehabiliteringsprogram. 70%. 70%. And that that was at the staff that I thought God was going to give me. Og det var ikke lige de ansatte jeg troede folk Gud ville give mig. But God is doing miracles in spite of it. Men Gud gør mirakler på den her måde. I close with this. Jeg vil lukke med det her. There's there there's a time in November and December. Der er en tid i november og december. Where I don't do any traveling on the road. Hvor jeg overhovedet ikke rejser. And the rest of the months I I I travel and raise money for the Dream Center. Resten af tiden så så rejser jeg og rejser penge op til det her but, projekt. But in November and December. Men i november og december. I take those months off. Så tager jeg månederne ud. So it was one day before Thanksgiving. Så det en dag før Thanksgiving. And so the the day before. Og dagen før. My wife always tells me so she that me. on Thanksgiving Day, at på Thanksgiving Day, I need to be out of the house in the morning. Så skal være ude af huset for morgenstunden af. Because I get in everybody's way. Fordi jeg kommer i vejen for alle. <laughs> so my job is to get out of the house while they're preparing the big Thanksgiving meal. Så mit arbejde er at bare forsvinde fra huset mens de forbereder Thanksgiving måltid. <laughs> and so it's the day before. Så dagen før. And my apartment is next to a movie theater. Og min lejlighed det er ved siden af en biograf. And I'm on, vaca- I'm on vacation. Og jeg er på ferie. I'm just walking around. Jeg chiller bare har det godt. And I see a movie poster. Og så ser jeg en biografplakat. For a movie called Frozen. For en film der hedder Frost. Remember when Frozen came out? I mean, I Frost. I mean it's about you guys. I mean, om jer. <laughs> basically, I mean, uh, and so I saw the poster. Og så så den her plakat. I said I'm going to take my kids. Så jeg tager mine børn. And get them out of the house. Kommer ud af huset. And on on Thanksgiving morning. 
på Thanksgiving morgen. So that my wife can prepare the meal. Så min kone bare kan være derhjemme og forberede måltidet. So I was walking up to buy the tickets. Så vi gik hen for at købe billetterne. For the movie. Så den her film. And the guy looks at me. Og så kigger han på mig. He's like, you wait five minutes. Så vent lige her fem minutter. I haven't opened yet. I haven't opened the um, cash register oh, jeg har, yet. Jeg har ikke åbnet salget endnu. So I walk around. Så jeg går rundt. And I'm just praying. Og så beder jeg bare. And looking at movie posters. Og så kigger på den plakat. And God spoke to me. Så taler Gud til mig. He said, I want you to bring. Han sagde, du skal bringe. All your other children to go see this movie. Alle dine andre børn til at komme og se den her film. I'm like, wait a minute, God. Så jeg, vent, I, I only have two kids. Jeg har kun to børn. <laughs> Who are these other children about which you speak of, you know? Andre børn, som du taler om. <laughs> he said, would you bring your other children? Han sagde, tag de andre børn med. And I said, oh God, well, okay, I know what you're talking about. Ah, Gud, nu ved jeg, hvad du mener. All the homeless families that alle, live in our building. Alle de hjemløse familier, der bor i vores bygning. And so, um, I said, but God, come on, that's 175 people. Så jeg, Gud, det er 175 I mean, mennesker. That's a lot of movie tickets to buy, 175 tickets, you know, and... Uh, det er mange begrafter der køber 175. Have you ever argued with God? Har du nogensinde haft en diskussion med Gud? And, and told him that you are a better steward of resources than he is? Og, og bil, prøv at bilde ham ind at du er en bedre forvalter af ressourcer end han er. I'm like God, that's irresponsible. Så sagde Gud, det er overhovedet ikke ansvarligt. 175 movie tickets. 175 begrafter. And God's like, I own the world, it's okay. Og så sagde Gud, you know? jeg ejer verden, jeg tror jeg styrer på det. I can make up the difference. Jeg skal nok klare den. And so I bought the tickets. Så købte jeg alle de billetter. And the guy said, how many do you want? Og så sagde fyren, hvor mange skal du have? I said, 175. Så jeg skal have 175. He said, wait a second. Så han vent. You went from three, you went, you went from asking for three tickets. Du gik for at spørge om tre. To 175. Til 175. In like five minutes. I fem minutter. <laughs> And I'm like, it's a spiritual thing, sir. You would not understand. You know, så er det en åndelig ting, du vil ikke forstå det. And he said, okay, and then, and then, and then he, he added up the tickets, and it was so expensive. Så sagde han, okay, han fik fat i alle de billetter, det var så dyrt. He said, wait a second, before I'm done. Så han vendte sekund lige før jeg er færdig. Do you want to buy these tickets in 3D? For du købte de her billetter i 3D? I'm like, no. Så sagde han, nej. Right, God? Ikke Gud. 3Ds are extra, $3 extra per ticket. 3D, så bliver det $3 ekstra per billet. I'm like, we're fine, right, God? Så sagde han, det er fint nu, er det ikke det, Gud? You will give me an obedience discount, you know? Så vil du give mig lidt rabat. And then Lord spoke to me. Så sagde Gud til mig. He said, "Would you take your children to go see it in 3D?" Så sagde han, "Vil du tage dine børn hen og se 3D?" I'm like, "Yeah, God." Så sagde jeg, "Ja, Gud." But come on, help me. Men ej, helt ærligt, hjælp mig lige. He said, "If you would do it for your children, han sagde, hvis du gør det for dine børn, you need to do it for all the homeless children who live at the Dream Center." Så skal du gøre det for alle de hjemløse børn der bor i Dream Center. Så okay. Så sagde okay. 175 tickets. Så sagde 175 billetter. 3D i 3D to go see Frozen. Gå ind og se Frost tomorrow. I morgen. I get to the movie theater. Så kom jeg hen. It was unbelievable. Det var helt utroligt. We invited all the kids. Vi inviterede alle børnene. They were so happy. De var så glade. And I showed up. Og så mødte jeg op. All the tickets in my hand. I don't know if you have the picture of the kids, but I have all the tickets in my hand. Jeg havde alle billetterne i min hånd. And I showed up to the theater. This is well, this is one of the girls we brought, but but I had all these tickets in in, in 175 in my hand. Jeg havde 175 billetter i min hånd. And I brought the children. Og så købte jeg børnene. And and they were so happy. And I walked into the theater. And I'm walking quickly. And all the kids are behind me. And the reason why I'm walking quickly is because I know what the next question is going to be. And you know what the next question is going to be. Because kids are the same all over the world. Maybe it's different food. But she said, is there going to be popcorn? popcorn? And I'm like, God, is there going to be popcorn? Så spørger Gud, er der popcorn? He's like, would you take your kids to get popcorn? Så sagde han, vil du give popcorn til din børn? He said, yes, popcorn for everybody. Så sagde han, ja, popcorn til alle. Pastor, is there going to be popcorn? Pastor, give popcorn. I'm like, yeah, there's going to be popcorn. I said it real quiet. I said, yeah, there's going to be popcorn. Så sagde jeg meget stille, ja, der er popcorn. I said it quiet. Jeg sagde det stille. Because I thought it would still be obedience. Fordi jeg troede, det ville stadig lyde. If I told them, yes, there will be. Hvis jeg sagde, ja, der vil være det. <laughs> But hopefully they wouldn't hear me. Men forhåbentlig så ville de ikke høre det. You know, and one of the kids goes, hey, pastor said there's going to be popcorn. Men en af børnene råbte højt, ja, yeah, præsten giver popcorn. How many know that if you have children, Hvor mange ved, hvis I har børn, you can yell something you want them to, you want them to do. Så kan du råbe højt, hvad du har dem til at gøre. And they can't hear you. Og de kan ikke høre dig. But you can whisper something they want. Men du kan viske noget som de gamle har. And suddenly those children have perfect hearing every time. Og lige så kan børnene bare høre alt helt perfekt. And so we went there. Og så gik vi derhen. And we bought them whatever they wanted. Og vi købte lige hvad de ville have. And that little girl you saw in the picture. Og den lille pige så lige før på billedet. She sat next to me in the theater. Hun sad ved siden af mig inde i biografen. She said, "Pastor." Hun sagde, "Præst." She said, "I live at the Dream Center." 
Jeg bor på Dream Center. And she said, I go to the school down the street. Og jeg går i skole ned ad gaden. I used to live in a car with my mom. Jeg begyndte, jeg plejede at leve i en bil med min mor. We were homeless living in our car. Vi var hjemløse levede i en bil. She said, we lived in bathrooms. Vi levede på toiletter. We lived in train stations. Vi levede på toiletstationer. And she said, my whole life I've been homeless. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> She said, my whole life I've been homeless. Så sagde, mit hele liv har jeg været hjemløs. Never had a place to live. Jeg har aldrig haft et sted at bo. This is the first time I've ever had a bed. Det er den første sted jeg nogensinde har haft en seng. And she said when I walk home. Hun sagde, når jeg går hjem. Everybody asks me where I live. Så spørger alle mig hvor jeg bor. And I tell them I live in the biggest house in LA. Og jeg siger til dem jeg bor i det største hus i hele Los Angeles. And I point to the Dream Center. Og så peger jeg hen på drøm, Dream Center. And she says, Pastor, thank you. Og hun sagde til mig, præst, tak. For everything that you've done for me. For alt hvad du har gjort for mig. And she sat down. Så satte hun sig ned. With a big old popcorn. Med hendes kæmpe popcorn. A hot dog. En hot dog. And and the biggest drink I mean that you could buy. Og det største sodavand du kunne få. And she sat next to me. Og så sad hun ved siden af mig. She said, What are these glasses? Hun har de her briller. I said they're 3D. De er 3D. It helps you see it closer. Det hjælper så du kan se det hele meget bedre. And she's like, oh. Så siger hun, ah, på den måde. Off on, off så dem, on. Er på, er på. Off on, er på. And I'm getting mad. Og så bliver jeg sur. Because when you pay three extra dollars for those glasses. Når du betaler så meget for at få 3D. You can't enjoy the movie. Så kan du ikke nyde filmen. Until they keep those glasses on. Før de har de her briller på og beholder dem på. I said, keep them on. Så jeg behold dem på. She's all, all clear, blurry, blurry, clear. Hun blev af på, af på. And I'm getting mad. Jeg blev sur. I'm like, please keep them on. Så jeg, bare hold dem på. <laughs> please keep them on. Bare hold dem på. And then the spirit of the Lord speaks to me. Så talte Gud sådan til This mig. This is what he spoke to me. Så sagde han det til mig. He said. Han sagde. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> so I let it go, amen. And um, Så jeg lod det bare være, amen. And so when the movie was over. Så der filmen var slut. Well, before the before the movie end. Før filmen slutter. She put her head on my shoulder. Så putte hun sit hoved på min skulder. And she sang. Og så sang hun. She said, "Pastor, this is my first movie." Hun sagde, "Det her er min this første film." This is unbelievable. Film. Det er helt fantastisk. And then when it was over. Og da den så var slut. Her mom came up to me. Så kom min mor hen til mig. She was crying. Hun græd. She said, "Pastor." Hun sagde, "Præst." The biggest miracle. Det største mirakel. Just happened in my life. Er lige sket i mit liv. A biggest miracle just occurred. Det største mirakel lige skete. I said did all the money come back to my account for the tickets? Så jeg kom alle pengene tilbage på min konto for billetterne. She said no. Så hun, nej. She said my daughter. Hun sagde min datter. Was born. Blev født. From a man. En man man. Who raped me as a teenager. Som voldtog mig som teenager. When I was 13 years of age. Da jeg var 13 år gammel. A man abducted me. Blev jeg voldtaget af en mand. And took me. Og tog mig. And I became a prostitute at 13. From a man who literally stole me. Og jeg blev prostitueret for en alder af 13. And I was sold in every state in America. Og jeg blev solgt i hele USA. My daughter was was born from the rape of that man. Min datter blev født efter at blive voldtaget den her mand. And all she's ever known of men. Og alt hvad hun nogensinde har kendt til mænd. Her entire life. Hele hendes liv. Is what she has listened to in the bathrooms of the hotel rooms while I was being raped. Er hvad hun har hørt i mænd, hvis jeg blev voldtaget. That's all she's ever known. Det er alt hun nogensinde har vist om mænd. So every time she sees a man, så hver gang hun ser en mand, she won't look at him in the eye. Så hun ikke kigger ham i øjnene. Because she sees evil, fordi hun ser ondskab, abuse, og hun ser misbrug, pain, smerte, and torture. Og tortur. And she said, Pastor, hun sagde, præst, when you spoiled her and bought her that movie ticket, når du forkælede og gav den her biografi, and you told billet, her she could have whatever she wanted, du sagde hun kunne få lige hvad hun vil have. She put her head on your shoulder. Og da hun puttede sit hoved på din skulder. She said, "That's the greatest miracle I've ever seen in my life." Så sagde hun, "Det er det største mirakel jeg nogensinde har set." That's you're the first man she's ever loved. Det er du det første mand hun nogensinde har set. And from that day on. Og fra den dag. She's been my best friend. Så hun er min bedste ven. She finds me at the Dream Center. Når hun finder mig i Dream Center. And she runs as fast as she can. Og hun løber så hurtigt hun kan. And every time she sees me. Og hver gang hun ser mig. She jumps in my arms. Så hopper hun i mine arme. And sometimes, I mean, she'll hit me. She'll hit me from behind. Og så vil hun komme og slå mig bagfra. And she'll jump and strangle my neck, you know. So when I hop up, I hang him in hell. But she's my best friend. My best friend. Yeah, the idea cost me a million dollars. Yeah, then it didn't cost me a million dollars. But sometimes the idea doesn't have to make sense. But sometimes the idea doesn't have to make sense. Because God is doing something so much bigger. For the good of God, there's so much more. I never dreamed. I had a dream of that God. That God would send me to a city. Would send me to a city. To love people like this. Hvor jeg også skulle elske mennesker på den her måde. I thought I was going to show up. Jeg troede jeg skulle møde op. Turn the world upside down. Så bare vende hele verden på hovedet. With my preaching. Med min prædikner. God said I haven't called you to L.A. Men Gud sagde jeg har ikke kaldt dig til L.A. To be a great preacher. Til bare være en fantastisk prædikant. I've called you to walk through the streets of your city. Jeg har kaldt dig til at gå igennem gaden i din by. Pick up broken pieces. Og tage brudte stykker. And tell people. Og fortælle mennesker. 
they can dream again. At de kan drømme igen. And everywhere around that building. Og lige meget hvor er den bygning. I see the most broken of the city. Så ser de mest brudte mennesker i den her by. And I see people coming in and out all day long. Og jeg ser mennesker komme ind og ud hele dagen lang. 24 hours a day. 24 timer i døgnet. I take my own daughter to Skid Row. Jeg tager min datter med. I take her to the worst with 9000 homeless people. Der er 9000 hjemløse mennesker. And we've even stayed the nights. Og vi vil nogle gange være om natten. Amongst the homeless people in the middle of the streets. Blandt hjemløse mennesker i gaden. Because sometimes we have to change the scenery of our life. We've got to put ourselves in somebody else's world. That's what Jesus did. He spent his life looking for ways to put himself into another person's life. That's what Jesus did. They're celebrating Jesus coming into the city. The triumphant march into the city. Det var et triumftog ind i byen. And what's Jesus doing? Og hvad gør Jesus? Is he getting caught up in the celebration? Bliver han fanget i alt det her fejring? Now he's looking up at a tree. Nej, han kigger op på et træ. For a man that nobody wanted to be around named Zacchaeus. Han fik øje på Zacchaeus, som ingen havde noget at gøre med. And he says, Zacchaeus. Og han sagde, Zacchaeus. I want to have dinner at your house. Jeg skal spise hos dig i aften. Jesus spent his life. Jesus brugte sit liv. Putting himself. På at bringe ham selv. In other people's worlds. In the other men's world. Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. Matthäus kapitel 6, vers 6. The end of Jesus' life on I, earth. I slutningen af Jesu liv på jorden. He's coming to the end. Han kommer til enden. Only 28 chapters in, in, in Matthew chapter 28. I Matthäus 28. But in Matthew 26, 6. Men i Matthäus 26, 6. Just a few simple words. Er der bare nogle få enkle ord. The Bible says. Bibelen siger. Jesus enters a home. Er Jesus kommer ind i hjem. Of Simon the leper. Uh, Simon, som er, uh, that doesn't mean much. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the verse. Det er bare verset. That might not mean much to a lot of people. Det betyder måske ikke så meget til mange mennesker. But near the end of Jesus' death. Men det er tæt for Jesus døde det her. The most important hours of his life. De vigtigste timer i the, hans liv. The Bible says Jesus enters the home. Så siger Bibelen at Jesus han gjorde sin entré i hjem. Of a man who has leprosy. En mand som lider spedalskhed. Putting himself. Han brak sig selv. In someone else's world. In 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 anden's verden. In all thy ways acknowledge him. I all din vej anerkend ham. He will direct your path. Og så vil han jævne din stier. Whatever God gives you. I må hvad Gud giver dig. Value it. Øh, Værdsæt det. Love it. Elsk det. And use it all. Og brug det hele. For His glory. Til hans herlighed. And He just might take you down a path. Og det er måske tager dig ud af nogle veje. Of something you never even knew was in your life. Eller du så ikke vidste var i dit liv. There's a certain kind of road that leads to God's calling. Der er en særlig vej som leder til Guds kald. That only serving can reveal. Som kun det at tjene kan åbenbare. And blessing others. I at velsigne andre. Every head bowed, every eye closed all over this room. Lad os bøje vores hoveder og lukke vores øjne. Some of us are so worried about the path of life. Der er nogle af os der er så bekymret over livets vej. When God is saying, live in the moment that I've given you. Men Gud siger, lev i det øjeblik jeg har givet dig. You might have no money left. Du har måske ingen penge tilbage. But you got an encouraging spirit. Men du har en opmunterende ånd. Never say you have nothing. Aldrig sige at du ikke har noget som helst. It all begins with a seed. Det hele begynder med et lille sædekorn. A desk on a sidewalk. Et skrivebord på et fortov. The faithfulness of just being a part of a church as you're moving to new levels. Trofastheden vil bare være en del af en kirke som vi går fra herlighed til herlighed. And all over this room. Og over hele det her lokale. You're here this morning. Du er her den her morgen. You'll say pastor. Og du siger præst. I want to have the anointing. Jeg vil have salvelsen. To serve my generation. Til at tjene min generation. I want to live my life. Jeg vil leve mit liv. I want God to anoint me. Jeg vil at Gud skal salve mig. To live my life. Til at leve mit liv. Finding the needs of my city. Til at finde behovene i min by. And responding to the needs that are around me. Og respondere til de behov der er omkring mig. I want to have the anointing to put myself. Jeg vil have salvelsen til at bringe mig selv. In someone else's world. Ind i nogen andre andres verden. And I need prayer. Og jeg har brug for bøn. To carry this mantle upon my life. Til at bære det her mandat på mit liv. I want to live my life serving others. Jeg vil leve mit liv tjene andre. Yesterday. I går. As I was I was coming from back from the ferry. Da jeg kom fra færgen. 70 players on the bus. Så var der 70 spillere på den her bus. As we arrived. Og som vi ankom. God spoke to me. Tal Gud til mig. He said you're not on a vacation from serving. Han sagde du er ikke på ferie for at tjene. I want you to jump down there and I want you to grab every bag that you can and I want you to I just want you to serve the team while you're here. Du skal hoppe ned og så skal du hjælpe pigerne med at få alle de her tasker ud af bussen. You see if we live our life with our palms up. Vi vi lever livet med hænderne op. We'll only be happy when it's Christmas and our birthday. Vi er kun glade, når det er jul og vores fødselsdag. 
But if you live your life with your palms down giving. Men hvis du lever dit liv med en given attitude. You'd be happy every day of your life. Så vil du være glad hver dag resten af pastor, I want the anointing. Og så sige præst, jeg vil have salvelsen. To serve others. Til at tjene andre. And look for ways to be a blessing. Og lede efter måder at være en velsignelse. To put myself in someone else's world. At bringe mig selv ind i andres verden. I just want you to raise your hands right now. Just lift them up. Just lift them up right now in Jesus name. Just lift them up, Father. Far. I just ask you right now. Jeg beder dig lige nu. That as this church moves to its greatest hour. Som den her kirke flytter sig til herlighed. Of amazing opportunity. Fantastiske muligheder. Of amazing blessing. Og fantastiske velsignelser. Of a new era. En ny era. I pray God. Jeg beder Gud. That Lord that there this amazing church. At den her fantastiske kirke. Will just continue to enlarge. Vil fortsætte med at vokse. Every part of the heart. Hver del af hjertet. To find needs and fill them. At finde behov og fylde dem, møde to, dem. To look for hurts and to heal them, God. At lede efter smerte og hele den. Right in the middle of the city. Lige her midt i byen. I thank you for that you're raising up. Jeg beder at du rejser dig. A generation. En generation. Of people with broken hearts. Af mennesker med brudte hjerter. That live their life every day. Som lever hver dag deres liv. Looking for a way to be a blessing. Lede efter måde at være en velsignelse. Looking for a way to serve. Lede efter måde at tjene. Anoint them today for this cause. Jeg vil sige dem til det i dag. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you today. God bless you. Thank you.